nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. This is a brief introduction to the CNT band simulator, which is available on the nanohub. A brief description of the functions performed by the tool will be introduced, followed by a quick overview of the problems tackled with the CNT band simulator in proceeding components of this learning module. The purpose of the CNT band simulator is to compute the electronic band structure for carbon nanotubes. The outputs include molecular structure, including a graphical view and relevant outputs, band structure, and density of states. More information on this tool can be found within the referenced work. This learning module works out four examples for the CNT band simulator which are designed to demonstrate both the operation and capability of the simulator. The first example examines the atomistic structure of various CNTs. The second focuses on properties of the armchair CNT. The third, the zigzag CNT. And finally, the fourth example looks at how diameter affects material properties. This is the solution exercise one. The problem statement is as follows. A M N C. This is the solution exercise one. The problem statement is as follows: A M N C N T can be simulated using C N T bands by inputting M and N. A. Simulate a seven seven C N T and print out its unit cell structure. Why are C N Ts with M equal to N called armchair C N Ts? What is the length of a unit cell? B. Simulate a thirteen zero C N T and print out its unit cell structure. Why are CNTs with n equal to zero called zigzag CNTs? What is the length of a unit cell? C. Simulate a 107 CNT. What is the length of a unit cell? D. Read T in Table 3.3 in Physical Properties of Carbon Nanotubes by Sato to compute the length of a unit cell for A through C. How do the computed results compare to the simulated results? For Part A, simply open a new instance of the CNT bands program. The armchair CNT with chirality 77 is the default setting, as shown. Press Simulate, and then select Molecular Structure Unit Cell from the Result drop-down menu. The following image for the unit cell will appear. You can press the button labeled 1H to see how many carbon atoms are in a unit cell. For this CNT, there are 28 such atoms. Note the spacing between carbon atoms, which leads to the designation armchair, as will be discussed in the next slide. To understand why CNTs with M equal to N are called armchair CNTs, let's examine the honeycomb-like structure of a graphene sheet from which CNTs are created. The circumference of the nanotube that will result from rolling the graphene sheet is denoted by C and determines the designation of the nanotube. If the vector C is in the X direction, as shown, then the ends of the nanotube will have a structure that resembles an armchair. To find the length of a unit cell using CNT bands, select Output Log from the Results drop-down menu and scroll down until you see the entry for length of unit cell. The unit cell length is 0.24595 nanometers in this case. Following the same procedure for a 13-0 zigzag CNT results in the following molecular structure. This zigzag CNT has 52 carbon atoms per unit cell. Note the difference between the spacing between these atoms and those of the armchair previously discussed. This structure is designated zigzag, reasons to be discussed in the next slide. To understand why CNTs with M equal to zero are called zigzag CNTs, let's once again examine the structure of the graphene sheet. If the circumference vector is now in the y direction, as shown, the end of the nanotube will be a zigzag shape. To find the unit cell length, once again, select Output Log from the Results drop-down menu and scroll down until you see the entry for length of unit cell. The unit cell length is 0.426 nanometers in this case. To find the unit cell length of a 107 CNT, follow the procedure previously presented. The unit cell length is found to be 2.1014 nanometers. To compute the unit cell length, use the following equation for T. L and R are computed as shown. The results are as shown. In all cases, the computed length matches the simulated length very closely. This is the solution to exercise 2. 
The problem statement is as follows. Simulate a 7-7 CNT and answer the following questions. A. Is the CNT metallic or semiconducting? How many valleys are in the Breuin zone? B. Use the zone folding method to explain why armchair CNTs are always metallic. C. What is the carrier velocity near the Fermi level? D. What is the simulated density of states near the Fermi level? How does it compare to the computed value D of V is equal to 4 pi over H bar VF? For part A, simply open a new instance of the CNT bands program. The armchair CNT with chirality 77 is the default setting, as shown. Press simulate and the following EK relationship will appear. At this point we can see that there are two valleys in the Brillouine zone. To determine if the CNT is metallic or semiconducting, zoom into the region shown. There is virtually no band gap, so we conclude that the CNT is metallic. Alternatively, you can select the output log and scroll down to the band gap magnitude entry. We see that the band gap is less than a tenth of an electron volt and the CNT is indeed metallic. We will now explain why all armchair CNTs are metallic by using the zone folding method. The zone folding method refers to determining the band structure of device by applying periodic boundary conditions to the band structure of a larger dimension device of the same material. Here we take a graphene sheet, which is the 2D transport structure shown, and confine the X dimension by applying a periodic boundary condition, as shown. The Fermi points for a graphene sheet occur at 0kx plus or minus 4 pi over 3 square roots of 3 acc times ky. If either of these points are passed through by the allowed k vectors, then the CNT is metallic. If we examine a 2D representation of real space, and transform it to reciprocal space, we get the following. Since the x direction now has a periodic boundary condition applied to it, the kx component of k takes discrete values. Since the y direction is the transverse direction and is assumed to be very long, the ky component of k is continuous. Then we see that the following k are allowed. It is clear that both Fermi points are passed through by k and that the CNT is metallic with two valleys in the Brillouin zone. To calculate the carrier velocity near the Fermi level, V sub f, we need to evaluate the derivative of E of k with respect to k. The graph we found in A can be used to extract this derivative, which is the slope of the EK relation near the Fermi level, E is equal to zero. Before we can do that, however, we will need to find the factor by which the EK relationship is normalized, KT max, which is computed from the following equation. Doing that gives a KT max of 1.28E8 per centimeter. Taking DEDK as the slope of the EK relation near E equals 0 times KT max will give DEDK equal to 6.71E negative 8 centimeter electron volts, which gives a carrier velocity of 1.0E8 centimeters per second. For part D, select density of states versus energy from the results pull down menu. The density of states at the Fermi level, E equals 0, is 1.99 E7 per electron volt centimeter. Now that we have a simulation result for the density of states near the Fermi level, we will compute the value from the following formula. Since we previously computed the carrier velocity is 1.0 E8 centimeters per second, we can now compute the density of states. The computed density of states is found to be 1.93 E7 per electron volt centimeter. This is very close to the simulated value. This is the solution to exercise 3. The problem statement is as follows. Simulate a 13-0 CNT and answer the following questions. A. Is the CNT metallic or semiconducting? If semiconducting, what's the band gap of the lowest subband? B. Plot the density of states. Why does it show singularities at the subband gaps? Hint. DOS of 1D nanostructures can be expressed as D of V equal to 1 over pi times H bar times V of V per spin per valley. For part A, set N, M to 13 and 0, respectively. Press simulate and the following EK relationship will appear. There is clearly a band gap, so we conclude that the CNT is semiconducting. To determine the value of the band gap, you can select output log and scroll down to band gap magnitude entry. 
we see that the band gap is 0.81678 electron volts. For part B, select density of states versus energy from the results pull down menu. It is as shown. As expected, CNT is semiconducting, so the density of states near the Fermi level is zero. As mentioned in the problem statement, there are singularities near the subband gaps. The reason for this will be discussed in the next slide. The density of states can be seen to be inversely proportional to the velocity of carriers. This implies that when the carrier velocity is zero, that a singularity in the density of states will occur. Since the velocity is directly proportional to the derivative of the EK relationship, we conclude that when the EK relationship has a maximum, minimum, or point of inflection, that a singularity in the density of states will occur. There are clearly minima and maxima near the subband gaps. We can verify this by examining the following plot of density of states and K on the horizontal axis and energy on the vertical axis. This is the solution to exercise 4. The problem statement is as shown. Simulate N0 zigzag CNTs from N equal to 12 to N equal to 26. A. What percentage of CNTs is metallic and what percentage is semiconducting? B. Read Mintmeyer and White, Universal Density of States for Carbon Nanotubes, Physics Review Letter 81, 2506, 1998. State the condition for a CNT to be metallic and the condition for a CNT to be semiconducting. C. For semiconducting CNTs, plot the band gap as a function of the CNT diameter. D. Can the plot be fitted by EG equal to E0 over D in nanometers, where D is the CNT diameter? If so, what is the fitting value E0? For part A, referring to the cited reference states that about 33% of all CNTs are metallic, with the remaining 67% semiconducting. For part B, referring to the reference stated in the problem, we find that for a CNT with chirality N1, N2, that the CNT is metallic if N1 minus N2 is an integer multiple of 3, and semiconducting otherwise. This result matches well with that of part A. Since N1 and N2 are confined to being integers, the difference is also confined to an integer. Since every third integer is an integer multiple of 3, one third of all integers are a multiple of 3, and thus one third of all possible differences, N1 minus N2, are integer multiples of 3. To obtain the required data points, execute the following procedure for n equal to 12 through 26 in steps of 1. First, enter the current value of n as shown, setting m to 0. Press simulate and select output log from the results drop down menu. Record the nanotube diameter, and then scroll down to find the band gap magnitude. Plotting the data points will result in the following graph. For part D, we want to know if we could fit the band gap to diameter relationship by a simple fitting constant. We can see right away that when n is a multiple of 3, that the diameter has no impact on the band gap. However, consider the function as shown, which is a sampling function with magnitude 0 when n is a multiple of 3 and 1 otherwise. If we then called the envelope of eg as eg fit, then we can represent eg as the product of s and eg fit. For this reason, we will say that we can fit the relationship by a constant. To find the fitting constant, E0, use the data obtained for n equal to 19. This will give E0 equal to 0.838 electron volt nanometers. The resulting graph of the envelope, EG fit, is as shown. It closely passes through the simulated diameter band gap points when n is not an integer multiple of 3.